Okay. All right. Well, welcome to our meeting. Thanks everybody for coming. Um, this is who I got here today. As people come in, we'll fill this out some more. Are you guys seeing my my screen? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, it doesn't have the green thing around it like the moment it does. All right. Well, um, so I want to talk about some of the priorities that that we as the SALT core team for Windows have kind of been tasked to work on. Uh, there has been some discussion about uh, opening master on Windows and having that be more community supported. Uh, we're still waiting for approval on that. Um, the set for installing Windows anywhere, uh, having it run out of program files instead of being on the root of the C drive has been approved and uh, we plan on on that for the next the next release, having that done for the next release. I still think, can't remember the name of that release. Is that silicone? Silicon. Mm -hmm. Silicon. Okay. So we plan on having that for silicon. Um, we've also been asked to uh, help out with a project called Heist, uh, which is a masterless windows mm -hmm. and uh so that means getting the uh tiamat builds working on windows to allow for a single binary version of salt to be pushed down and run commands on the machine and return the results um, so there's uh, some work we're going to be working on there uh, then uh, migrating to functional tests, all the Windows tests, as well as just over to PyTest in general. We've, uh, we're dropping support for run test and we wanna move everything over to PyTest. And uh, finally, NSSM removal. Uh, that would mean writing our own service manager for SALT. I'm not sure how involved that would be, but we want to get rid of the, there's some, there's some messages that show up in the Windows logs that say NSSM. Um, and it's just, uh, we, we went through and recompiled it so it doesn't say non-sucking service manager. It says salt service manager, we call it SSM, but it's basically the same code. We just changed a bunch of labeling inside of it, but <clears throat> we want to go away from that and start using uh, native Python service manager of some sort. Um, so those are the those are the priorities from Salt. Um, we're welcome. We welcome any help from the community on those. Uh, community may have other priorities that they would like to see in, and that's kind of what this meeting is for: is to uh, what are the folks that are using salt on windows, what are they, what do they feel import, is important? Um, the uh, push for the installing salt anywhere came from that. Is the, that's what the community has, has talked about in many of our previous meetings. Um, last time we talked about why Windows is three times slower than Linux <laughs> uh, as far as salt on Windows. And it, it all comes down to the multi-processing and the way, it's, the way processes are forked on Windows. Um, well, we talked about addressing directory permissions in the SEP. And I can't remember if we did that or not. I don't know that we did any of these action items. I didn't assign them to anybody. I usually do. All right, I will. I will take care of this one. And uh, I started. I did start looking at some of these broken URLs. In the Win Repo. In Win Repo, yeah. Did we do that but, last time? Yeah, we talked about it and. And then I looked at a few, I actually submitted a PR. There, there's some weird uh, edge cases in there. Um, 
the, the problem is a lot of the files it's, that are, they're hosted on sites that don't give you a consistent URL. It's like, it's, mm. uh, it's uh, I don't know, they're trying to load balance or uh, you have to like buy, you have to buy an account with them and then you can give people a, a single URL. Otherwise it just puts a random, uh, like a subdomain at the beginning and then it expires in a week. So it's like, we can't always depend on that URL being there. So I don't know how to handle those cases. You know what I mean? Where, where the software is hosted on a site like that. Other than we change it to a salt URL and say, well, you're gonna have to download that and put it on your file server. Maybe that, maybe we have to put a note like that up at the top. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. <clears throat> at least to offer some kind of alternative that we know is like a valid alternative instead of just saying, sorry. Let me see if I can show you the example I was working on. Yeah, so I added this. Uh, What is this classic shell? I was able to find it was Foshub was the one, but the actual URL is different. So so the this 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 link works, but it like redirects. You know what I mean? Oh. Mm -hmm. It redirects to the to the link that changes every time. It's it's because it's originally hosted on Mediafire. Mediafire is the one that uh, it gives you an actual different name every time. If I go to this, it won't even. I don't know if it even work. Yeah, so it doesn't. Right. Work. Is there anywhere else this is hosted? No. Redirect. No. So, but this this one actually gives you a download. Oh, I've got to fix it, but. I'd have to fill it in with the information, but so we did have in the retro feedback from a couple of people to make sure that salt when repo ng is updated with the new Windows packages in time for releases. Is this something that affects that? Is it because the URLs are constantly changing? It doesn't affect salt because um, our URL never changes. Ours is gotcha. always repo.saltstack.com slash windows. Um, but if you're using a file hosting service, like the yeah. like that other one was. Right. Uh, I've lost it. Boss Hub or it wasn't media fire. Media fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it actually the actual URL is uh, like download 457.mediafire.com and that download part changes gotcha. you know up every couple of weeks or every over a period of time. So it's never the same. Some sites I was able to find a way to get to it, but with media fire I couldn't. What if we just host it and just provide an upstream link? <laughs> I, don't well, I, well, I don't think we want to host all the all the open reap all the free open source software on salt's websites probably not you know yeah i don't know what to do about that that's an interesting thing i i almost wonder if we need to be like listening for changes <laughs> So we can at yeah. least have an alert that says, hey, this changed. We could just ping the URL every couple of days. And if we don't get a 200, something's up. Yeah, I wonder if we could even. Yeah, but don't we don't know. dynamically update this stuff either. Right, but it, what if we thought of, what if we, could we do something that was almost like 
not just going and pinging it, but what if we ran a job and we did, or could we do something with like beacons and reactors where it's like listening for a change and then uh, at least giving a notification if not actually dynamically updating it. Could we salt it? I feel like Maybe we could not. definitely use a beacon here. Right, like I, I feel like we have an answer to this question. We're just not quite using it that way. I agree. Um, well, and maybe it's not possible, but kind of seems like it should be. Just we can't predict what media fire is going to do. Sure, but yeah, that, that's we... what's that's what's supposed to happen right there. Gotcha. Where it gives you okay. So so this works. So that link actually works, and I think this will actually work with salt. Um, the problem is the test suite here, and I, I sent the, the test suite on the Win repo. Mm -hmm. When you submit a PR, it goes and tests the URLs. Oh, so it's constantly failing. It, it fails because it doesn't follow this little redirect thing. So right. like I just I just got this. Uh, so I did very... Boss Hub Classic. And it gives me this download, right? I'm going to download it. But if I go over here and look at what the actual download is, it's, it's right. not. See, it's, it's it has an expire fun. time in it. It has a, bad, a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. No, it's so, not the real URL. So maybe those tests aren't really valid. I don't, oh, I can see. understand why you want to test, but. They're always going to fail. So this runs on PRs. So, so for example, this one tells me that the tests failed because, right. it, because the URL expected. couldn't be validated because we're trying to avoid new instances of, yeah. So I asked Daphne to, Daphne to look at it. And he said, David, yeah. Is that how you say it, David? Yeah. So it's the Welsh spelling of <clears throat> David. So it's actually phonetic. David. David. So yeah, it's so this is the failure right. here. <laughs> yeah, I would be interested to know how other people must be doing this because that. Well, that's the only test we have on this repo is just validating URLs. We don't, <laughs> we don't test anything else. Um, we, yeah. so, so that runs on PRs. Then we have yeah. an action that runs once a week or something that, that tests the URLs on all, all of them. And so we have many failures. So I, I have to search for a problem here. I don't know, Shane, I think we could figure this out with a uh, beautiful so soup. Like this one you could probably figure out. We could probably find a fixed URL here. There's someone we can probably fix. So that's kind of what we were wanting to do is go through these and try to fix the invalid URLs. This reminds me a lot of when I was developing uh, VWIN, trying to find <clears throat> dynamic links on various websites and uh, Beautiful Soup definitely came in handy. Even though we didn't go that route, that was the solution. It was just to get the raw HTML parse for the link, you know, with some preconditions that you kind of are expecting it to be this, you know, kind of narrow down the searches, process of elimination, and then you just end up with the link. Like the way the test works is it, it just goes and tries to get a header from whether it was in the state file. You know, it almost makes me wonder if we, uh, should consider using um uh we don't use sonar cube what do we use for automatic testing what did nate use for cypress? ui testing cypress it almost cypress makes tests. me wonder yeah if we could do a cypress test here that would go and like do a fuzzy search I don't know if it has that capability or not, but I wonder if it's worth asking. I don't know. Beautiful suit may be just the way to go. It's just another option. 
like, I wonder if we could, if we have a couple of options, then as we start going through it and we can't use something, we have another option to go to and say, maybe there's something else we could look at. Like if Cypress is not the answer, that's fine. Beautiful Soup's not the answer for everything, that's fine. But maybe a combination of things will work out. For sure, we could definitely figure out Cypress, just ask Travis or Nate. I think the uh, future of packages on Windows is that new package manager that they're pushing. Is it uh, Winget? Winget. That deserves a module. Yeah. So I think this is the future of uh, packages on Windows for, for open stuff. I think we could still maintain WinRepo for handling when I have a CD and I need to install whatever I'm hosting on my private network, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A customized package that I need to install. Right. That's not out on the web. I think we could keep WinRepo around for that. But okay. I almost think we need a state and execution module for WinGet. Is it fully... Uh, released 1.0 or are they still in alpha it, beta? It should be about there. So what we need is the ability to install, upgrade, uninstall. I think at this point, as of December, I think we have everything we need. Okay, the rest of cool. it is... Oh, there you go. 1.0 oh, in, in May. May. Nice. Yeah. That's coming up. So I'm thinking we could... Uh, we could start building on this. That's actually really good. That's cool. Um, ha and this is Sorry. hosted by Microsoft, so it's supported. And there will be community support. That's building cool. packages. Super legit. So I, I, I think this is better than chocolatey and all the other <laughs> options. <there>. That's great. <laughs> yeah. That's great. What about uh, let's see a mark. Uh, is that yeah, on your so list? Then, Were we going to talk about that? Yeah, we just talk about talking that. about packaging made me think about that. Last I recall, Chad had actually made some really good headway working on the wonder, but I know that's been definitely a couple months since him and I have talked about that. But he was definitely making progress on the wonder, and that was the way that it had to be for Windows too. Having to zip or having to unzip every time you want to run a command was just like no bueno. It's not going to work. Yeah. 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 You can't do that. That was slow. Please. But um, I think that's the way they wanted to go with uh, Heist, right? Is a single binary. Yes. And so there's so some that... work to be done. Yeah. And we had originally said, oh, we're not going to think about single binary packages for Windows right now. But then other things came up that we would need it. And so that's kind of coming not so much as like, oh, this is your initiative, but that other things need it. So that work will trickle in. Does that make sense? So I kind of want to keep that in the front of you guys' mind that that work will come around because I feel like we sneak work in right to other people all the time. And I want to stop doing that. <laughs> So what's the other what's the other type of Tiamat build called? It's not uh, binary. Wonder. Wonder. Yeah. Wonder. Yeah, one directory. Yeah. And uh, so as as we looked at packaging that up, they did say, I think you guys were there for that conversation that we were talking about. If we do Tiamat or salt, do we do a tar, do we do a zip? And we came to the consensus that we would need to do both. And we would definitely need both for Windows. Yeah, for Windows we do a zip. Yep. But if we're doing a tar, we can do a tar for everything. And if that doesn't work for you, we definitely provide a zip for Windows. We may not provide a zip for everything else, but we definitely provide it for Windows. And um, so, it was a good yeah, conversation. So, so for Windows, we could push down a zip and unzip it once. Mm -hmm. Does Heist clean up after itself? See, these are questions I need to ask the Heist team. Like, I don't does know. Does it delete the single binary? Does it, I don't know. Does, we'll have does to it ask. need to delete the one there and unzip it every time? And 
Uh, that's how the current uh, single binary works. I don't know <clears throat> if it Why? has to be that way, but it unzips every time it runs a command and it unzips it into temp. Um, and then it just blows it away, right? It doesn't even have to worry about cleaning up after itself. It just blows the whole thing away and just restarts every fresh command. I don't know if it does. And I don't, salt, miss, salt SSH doesn't. No, it there's probably the, some aspects to it that doesn't. It lays the file down and then future calls using salt SSH check for that. And if it finds it, then it just uses it. For sure, if something needs to stay alive, but every time you run a new command, it ends up in a brand new location. When you use heist? Uh, TMAT. When you use TMAT. Yeah. So that's no, that'd be heist. not going to work. Well, that'd be heist. it would. That's heist. That's not. Okay. Interesting. That's something we should bring up as we talk about it this week, then, because I. I didn't understand that to be the case, but for maybe for Windows it is, but that doesn't make any sense. Well, we just need to understand how it's architected. Yeah. Course. Yeah, because so I remember the, that was an issue with PIP because PIP needed static locations and Pi Installer was like, well, we'll give you one, but you have to go find it. And that's when Pager had to do a lot of crazy work with the PIP module and make it all custom because Pavic. Okay. I wonder where they are with that because I know they were still working on it. So we're talking about two different things here. We are. Yeah. Um, okay. the, the other issue with Heist that we need to figure out is the communication. I think they want to use uh, WinRM, so we've got to yes. get that figured out. So. I wonder where SSH is for Windows. Yeah, so if we did SSH, then they would have to install OpenSSH on 2016 and 2012 R2. They would. And I don't know that like Windows 10 comes with OpenSSH enabled out of the box, like server does, right? Uh, none of it's enabled by default. It is a feature that you have to manually enable on Windows yeah, but, 10. But on server, it's there on 2019, right? Server, it's, yeah. So that's that's why OpenSSH isn't as compelling an option because it's not there by default. It requires you to do some additional steps. Maybe we could do those steps over one as a setup. Send it down in a file. And then, I don't know, but maybe they don't want us installing software. That's the whole point is we don't want to yeah. be installing anything, right? We want to be able to run salt in a truly masterless way, I guess. That's true. Right. So do, are there people using salt with Windows that use Salt SSH now, or not as much? It is a, it's an enterprise offering oh, and good. it uses WinRM. And it uses WinRM, okay. And I have to build a zip. It's basically a, a standalone um, Python environment with all of Salt's dependencies in it. It gets pushed down and then salt ssh installs a version of salt into that environment once it's on the machine okay. and then runs that and that file remains that little environment remains on the machine interesting Whereas Heist, instead of using a zipped Python environment, will now contain either a single binary or a zipped wonder. So, so it's kind of similar, I guess, the way they would work. Interesting. Okay.
yeah, I just didn't know how much that was actually even in use. Just my lack of knowledge. I, I don't know how much it's used either. Yeah. What's telling is I don't think I have built the zip file for 3002 yet and nobody said anything, so. Interesting. Maybe that means nobody's using it, so. Sounds like a don't ask, don't tell. It does kind of, but it's, that's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Hey, Marcus. Something Marcus is on. Hey, Shane. Hey. How you doing? Fine. It's so silly. I, I forgot to, to set the clock half an hour earlier, and I was the one who who urged you to do to start earlier in the beginning. So I'm, re, I'm feeling really <laughs> stupid now. <laughs> was it earlier or later? I think it was earlier. See, it was the good old times before Corona. And I wanted to to rush away and have. No, uh, but I I, um, I I tried to join you, and I have changed my my calendar. So. Okay. Was there uh, was there something you wanted to talk about? Uh, I could discussed? mention that um, Windows becomes blazingly fast as soon as you turn off multiprocessing. That's what <laughs> I can confirm. Okay. This is really um, yeah. I, I, maybe it's not universally usable, but for my use cases, it is. So I cannot. Um, yeah, what I'm doing is I'm doing some command run um, file dot manage all this works. Have you, uh, you haven't noticed any issues with it? No. no. Nothing with the jobs filling up, the job cache filling up, anything? No, uh, I have, um, I have a, crop, um, um, what it is, what is it? Um, a regular, um, there is a min. I use minion ping. That that works. I know. I noticed a problem wh when the, the client is offline. So I, I opened an issue regarding um, a client which is pinging um, starts to with with the three thousand salt three thousand. Um, um, so they 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 write into the log file, but I, I simply ignore that. So the log file is then. Um, not not a not a big concern. But oh, so uh, it's like they can't connect, and they keep writing to the log file that they can't connect. Well, they no, they they, they create a stack trace, and um, so the stack trace um, which is nice. So the the, 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 the the logging contains a, a stack trace of twenty lines or something, but there's no performance issue, and they continue to to stack trace. Finally, when they get online, then everything is fine again. Um, you created an issue. Can you link? Do you can you paste that in the chat? Uh, yeah, I even I even have a, like a work of a proof of work workaround for that. Um, and I think you asked me about that. Um, <clears throat> but I, oh, how should we find that? Um, wait, um, that's not too easy to find for myself. Um, All right here. I think I found it. 59064. Yep, it is. And I have, I think that's, if it's, I may have created a second one with a, with something which can, which can also be a workaround, but I'm really not sure. I, I hate that I have made the, the, the pull request into it. I left it as a draft. Okay. So I, I went down and saw that. Oh yeah, you, uh, you, you, you seem to believe that the work in progress pull request is an added fix, ad, 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 adequate fix. Thank you for that. Um, I said that? I did. Oh, <clears throat> oh Joe did. Yeah, Shane, I do recall you and I had gone through these and uh, we were in agreement that this was like, okay. 
I mean, it's been like two months and a lot has happened in those two months, but yeah. yeah. I could bring in my concern that at this point in time, then the, the parameter of, of that function where I said it, uh, it's really useless. So you have a useless parameter function uh, in there in the zero and Q. When, when you go up in, in there, in the text there, so in K set the, no, sorry, in the, in the source code, I mean, um, when you jump to the, can you jump to the line and, um, yep. So my, my only concern is that tries is a parameter to that function. And it's never really that. So who, who changed that to three now? Um, now, now I'm confused. Um, but I think one, one should, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not too familiar why, why this parameter is necessary, who calls it, how, how it works. So I don't, I don't, I don't want it to, that, that's why I called it the work in progress. I, I never found out who calls send. Hmm. I don't know either. This I'm not familiar with this code. I don't know that my comment makes sense. <laughs> I'm looking at this. Why did I say this? I don't know why I said this. Oh, I think we did that because in the event where tries. Oh, maybe not because I think a dot git will just set tries equal to none. I don't think. Oh, that it's because it, it's it's in case you pass like tries is two. We would want tries to be two. Oh, and not override it with this. So we would only want to get this if tries is none. That's why. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. In case we pass a different value there. It would always be getting this, uh, in fact, it, it would ignore the parameter. In fact, that, that's a good work, uh, in fact. So we do not understand who calls send, but in fact, what, what your, your condition, if tries is none, is necessary to prevent that that parameter is completely ignored. Yep. So I still think that's a valid request on that. Yes, you, you need that. And what I would do then is to set authentication tries to like 3 million. So it would continue to retry and retry because in the offline mode, this is all a workaround for the, the, the so the, the, the root cause is still in the code, but I could just simply retry as long as I 3 million in times 3 billion. And so uh, I would no longer get a stack trace, but it would also be nice to find why it's stack tracing. Right. Well, so if you got rid of the stack trace, would this be an issue? We could figure out why it's stack tracing. I even have not, I, I just leave my log files filling with stack traces. So I, I, I kind of not, I, I do not pursue that any longer. Um, have you uh, turned on some log rotation so they don't fill up yes. the hard drive? Okay. Yes, yes. So that don't, it doesn't fill the hard drive. I don't want it. I don't want it to patch my client once again. So I left it all in the original state, and it stack traces, and I'm fine. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I guess we need to look at the. It would be here. nice if a future version would allow me to increase the. <coughs> Authentication retries to three million, and then I would get rid of the um, stack trace. It would make a nicer log file. So yes, please uh, continue with that. Uh, sh shall I move it to? Oh, you have moved it from draft into open or something? Or no? Um, yeah, I'm gonna have uh, I wanna have Diwas look at this. To yeah, yeah. Uh, shall shall can... I do something? Hang on to it for now, because. Well, I, I do like PR, but I don't want you to have to sit there and set something to 3 million. It should keep trying, but not stack trace when it fails. That's true. But then um, <clears throat> speak to you. Because, in... because you don't want to have to put like 3 million tries on all your minions that you plan on having it's disconnected. Easy. I know, but that's, I don't think that's the right. No, it's just a workaround. Yes. Right. So we want to 
this looks like the same stack trace here, right? Down in this part after you did the uh, multiprocessing faults. Oh, it has to do with multiprocessing. I'm sorry. Um, so I forgot that. Oh, so you're saying when it's in true, it doesn't do it? Or it does? Oh, after removing faults and starting with lock things. So it has no influence. Oh, I see. Okay, so it doesn't make a difference whether. No. The prob the real problem for me is that authentication tries is ignored. Okay, and that's what that fixes that. That's what your PR fixes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, do you mind uh, making your those changes and that I requested, and we can take that out of draft. Good. So I, I uh, to make that if not now, if not none condition, and um, yes. put it in uh, out of draft. Yep. Okay. So that that would be well. I will find it. No problem. <clears throat> and then we'll look at the stack trace and see if we can figure out. Why yeah, that would be that would be the final goal. Yeah. So your uh, work, your PR actually fixes the other issue. This yes. issue. Okay. I, so link yes. your PR to that issue. And I, I cannot. You must. Uh, I'm I'm not allowed to link pull requests to um, the issues. But you or, can just reference it in the. I'll fix that. Uh, yeah, you've okay. got it referenced. I'll fix that. Oh, he does. Okay. Oh, I see you just referenced both of them. You've already. Uh, and what kind of tests? Uh, let me change the code. I'm I'm kind of uh, I I feel I feel not clever enough to write another test in this life. Um, <laughs> Shane, I think we never spoke about that, but. Um, I had one pull request and I made some people really angry because somehow I <laughs> rebased and this created a hell of a mess. And I cannot even tell you now I'm no longer, I, I will never ever rebase in my life. That's what I, that's, that's the conclusion. <laughs> this was really terrible. So some, some really bad things entered and I was, conf I, but I, I couldn't, I, I still don't understand what, I, what I've done now. So result is I'm, I'm 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 being more and more careful with Git and less uh, less ambitious and. Okay, so if you make that change, I will I will look at writing some tests for this. Okay. And I can rebase it too. Oh yeah, I mean, you could. I remember that um, I learned Git with um, with. Uh, Dave Boucher. Um, so if you can tell me how to rebase, then I would continue my learning experience with, with salt. That's uh, <coughs> you're my single source of salt git wisdom in this world. So essentially, it's it's that confusing thing. It's rebase, take yours, take theirs, and then I'm getting confused. And so were you getting some merge conflicts then? Yeah, and you had you have to re re resolve them by saying get yours. Get mine, get yours, but it's it's a reverse logic, and you're standing on the other side while you're talking to yourself. That kind of confusion. And Marcus, I, I think I ran into the same thing on a really big rebase that had some conflicts, and I ended up pulling in like fourteen hundred files into my PR, and it was actually Shane helped me with it, but I did a final Git pull that like screwed everything up that I wasn't supposed to do. <sighs> So with a change this small, I would almost uh, just copy the code out. Yeah. <laughs> Do a get thinking. reset hard upstream master and then, and then paste it back in and then do another commit. That's almost how I would do it. If you're having these kind, all kinds of conflicts. 
I don't see what this would be conflicting with unless somebody's edited that line. You only have one commit, right? Or you got two commits. Oh, and that one of them was just you merging the, I don't know, I, this one would probably do a pretty be okay. clean. Probably be pretty yeah. clean. <clears throat> you could just do a git, git rebase upstream master. I mean, that's the command I usually, there's two that I run, like git pull upstream master dash dash rebase. That's one way and then git rebase. Uh, is it just upstream slash master? Is that what, I can't remember exactly, it's something like that. But, but in, in case of, of conflicts shall I, shall I shall i answer then yeah, leave that leave that in the in the discussion so i can i need that anyway if i should do that i need it i need it in this form but um if i get a if i get a conflict i say yours or theirs or mine or uh you would always if it was code you didn't touch then you would take theirs okay i take theirs yeah so uh, we could we could do this one real quick. Maybe if you wanted to. We should, we should do it now. Just do one real quick. Do it. Let me uh let's do some live live demo. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So I am on Marcus's, what in the heck? Oh, that was from our work from yeah, Friday or whatever, some. Thursday. Yep. Saturday. I don't know why it's taking so long. I see you're not working in the git bash. No, I just work in the command prompt. Mm. All windows here, Marcus. <laughs> Why is that so slow? What's going on? Okay. All right. Okay. So be sure here. Okay. So I'm just do a git pull upstream master dash dash rebase. Oh, I cannot read that. That's silly. The um, exactly the last line is out of my window. How can I? Ah, Does that good, make perfect. it better if I do that? Yes, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so you say skip pull upstream master. Let me write that. Good. Is Dave Pouchet still with Sotvik? Yeah. Yeah. He's uh one of the, he's moved over to a uh, sales engineer though. He's not doing development anymore. Wow. But he still tells us what to do. Okay, so it's saying first rewinding head, replay verb, blah, 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 applying, da, 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 three, and that's done. So now we have rebased yep, already? Yep, rebased, yep. So this is a simple change, so there won't be much you on it. So push this back up. Okay, now since we've rebased, we have to do a force push. Usually oh, when you rebase, you have to force. So now we come over and look at. Okay, so now you rebase that, that pull request. Yep. Yep. 
And I just uh, checked it. There's still only a single commit. And nice. one file changed. Those are the changes and interesting. And it says no doesn't need to be rebased. So I should yeah. have done your change, huh? <laughs> let me let me do that. Uh, where is that code? I'll just do this thing. Salt transport zero Q. So we decided to add an if tries is none, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can remove the work in progress because otherwise um, some thing will warn that you cannot check in because it's work in progress. And oh, you mean in the PR? Now there is a comment in exactly that line you changed. Okay. Retrieve from configuration before using C, unless somebody gave it, uh, um, yes. Good, that's in fact true. Uh, oh, so and the A amends it. And M is message. <clears throat> yes, and A is amend. Yes, uh, up, it adds. Oh, yes, if I see it adds to, so it's, it stays a single commit. Um, no, it, can, it can't be, it, it, it's, a, it's a second commit. Yeah, it'll add any files that have been modified. Oh, I see it automatically adds. Oh, good. Yes. Otherwise, you have to do a git add. Yeah, I add do that all the time. Right. <clears throat> oh, yeah, and I wouldn't have black on my machine. So that it's really better that you do it because I would have just Started with black so, first place. What happened? Why didn't I remember my? There we go. There we go. Oh, good. Do that. Uh, where's the push? I don't need the force anymore. <clears throat> Okay, so now we should have our new changes yep. here. And two commits, got yeah, two commits, mine and yours. Because I did the ray base, it shows both of us together on that commit. Uh, okay. And then I Marvelous. added this one. Okay. All right, so I'll work on tests for this. So it's still work in progress until I get tests written. So. Oh yeah, right, right, right. Then I'll have DWAS look it over and that's pretty good. Okay, is there anything else we want to talk about? Uh, I, I got nervous, but no, no, I got not nervous because I have the latest and greatest server running 32.5 automatically retrieved uh, I think the, also the client has a vulnerability. I need to upgrade that, but nothing from, um, yeah, I, I hope to continue with all this. Um, I'm, I'm kind of getting, doing, doing other work, but the system still work, still runs. So I, I try to hang around and um, 
also try to convince, I don't know, some from, from time to time to, to be open to, to alternatives. Right. But, uh, we, we switched over to, to, to big, big Microsoft for everything. So, um, okay. But, but the, good, the good news is I'm, I'm part of that group because they are so impressed what I've done uh, with SaltStack and um, they do not <laughs> understand what I'm telling them. Um, so they just hired me. Uh, and... <laughs> Hopefully it came with a raise. In fact, <laughs> but um, so what, what, uh, yeah, the performance would be nice to see if it's really not, um, uh, not an issue for nobody. Uh, what else? Um, I, I listened to you want to um, change the deployment totally. Uh, that would be would be interesting. I have I, have, I tried with Joe, but I don't remember a thing. Um, so the wonder I, I looked at once and never never continued to look at. Yeah, these are some priorities that that we're being asked to focus on in the core team for Windows. So. They have some other projects that are depending on that. So we need to try to get that working. So the priority is topmost. <clears throat> yeah, so internal to us, this is what we're being asked to be our priorities. Um, we plan to have this one by so Silicon next release. Um, we're looking at opening this, making master on Windows open source and having more community driven support on it. <clears throat> and then the discussion about Tiamat has to do with the work we're doing with Heist. I see. Uh, so install <clears throat> anywhere. Uh, isn't program files good enough? Right. Well, that's where the default would be, but we would want to be able to support if they want to put it somewhere else. You know. Okay, that makes it more difficult. Program files come with some automatically automatically set, um, and and the MSI will also complain a lot. Um, so if you continue with the MSI, it will spit you some warnings in the face because it's not the well. It does it regularly, uh, and we need to do it now. Uh, I, we could get rid of some warnings, and we could rely on program files having the right kind of protection against user access by default. So you're saying that by allowing us to install anywhere on the MSI, that will cause us issues with the MSI installer? Not really. Uh, we could simplify it. We, we currently put it somewhere, anywhere. Backslash salt, C colon backslash salt is anywhere. And for, for that reason, we need to carefully and very painfully reset the user or the, um, the permission. We, we, we must not allow users. And we, we've done that, but that we, we, could, we could leave that out. If as soon, when you go to program files, it's automatically done by Windows. So no, you, no, no regular user has access to program files done. So security would be, would be like done um, and we could, scratch that code. Now, now we need to keep that code because we still want to be able to put it on salt or to, I don't know, my beloved place. Backslash, <laughs> right, <something>. right. <clears throat> but it, it works. It works now, so it will continue to work, but it's, it's, it's kind of a complexity, which, which I don't like. I would right. put it in program right. files and be happy. I'm... Yeah. Have you read the set where you wrote on it? Nope. Okay. That passed. I wasn't, we kind I wasn't of, it, aware there is one. Okay. Yeah. So that's the uh, step for, forward. And we've talked about um, a lot of that stuff. Oh, you uh, could have, wh what's that? Uh, is the discussion still open? No, we, we, it was open. We've already uh, so, uh, closed it and okay. accepted it. But it talks about some of these things you were talking about. Okay, well, then it, 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 will, it will continue to work. It worked now, it, it will continue to have this complexity, which is stable and proven. So 
reducing so, complexity maybe isn't that that necessary. One thing I'm not sure how the MSI will work is on an upgrade. The, the way we plan to handle this with, with the Nullsoft installer is if there is already an installation on the machine that is in CSALT, it will just upgrade it there and not move everything around. Oh, I see. You know what I'm saying? So if there's an existing installation, we don't touch it, we just upgrade it. Oh, you Whereas don't move it. Uh -huh. Right. Whereas new installations would allow them to select yeah, I the location. See. And so I don't know how easy that would be to handle in, in the MSI code. Good question. I have I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I couldn't tell from the right where I'm I don't know. I would have to look into that. Okay. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. We'll we'll work with you on it because we'll need your help getting that MSI to handle this. Yep, no problem. As well. Okay. All right. And well. it's definitely not moving it as possible. So the, if, if you're already decided against moving from, from Nullsoft, then I don't know, maybe, maybe the MSI can move, but um, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, well, we just don't want to cause additional problems. <laughs> if it's yeah, there and it's right. working, we're just going to upgrade it there and not not try to change yeah. anything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> there may, well, until we get into this, we don't know exactly what we need to do. So as we're going through it, we'll, we'll I guess maybe Slack you or. Email, email, email is the best. Uh, Slack is open. I open Slack once in a month. So email is the best <laughs> way to contact me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'll have you. Do I have your email? Let me make sure I got your email. Definitely have it somewhere. Yeah, that's some chat is here. Yeah, I've got it. I think. Gmail. And... Yeah, you're just Gmail. Okay, I have a Gmail one for you. Yep. Okay. Good. Awesome. Well, thank you, Marcus, for coming. All right, welcome. Appreciate it. And, uh, thank you, everybody else, for attending. And uh, we'll get together next month again and see where we're at. Okay. Perfect. Sounds Thanks, good. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.